What a ticket saver. Got something that's driving you crazy every time you get on it, you're exceeding the speed limit, and you just feel unsatisfied after riding it? Stop. Buy a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and all your troubles will vaporize. What a lovely feeling, just looking at those clocks as they go around this corner. This makes me feel as if I'm uh, back in the 50s or 60s without all the drama. All the character, but no drama. Am I going to leak oil? Will it start? What's wrong with the carburetor? Will I manage to stop with my drum brakes? None of those questions will be asked when you're on this bike. What a beaut. It's a 270 degree twin, so it's got a lot of character to it, but not the character that's intrusive. It's got a lovely burble when you're riding along, which turns into a snarl. You don't get an incredible amount of vibes from it. It's very smooth, but at the same time, it's got character. I really, really like it. When you start it up, it smells like, a, like an older Brit bike. It's got an oil cooler on the front. And get this, the thing comes with Brembo brakes and stock with steel braided lines. Such is the quality they've put into the bike. It starts about 7,700 Canadian, which is stunning. I mean, how many bikes out there do you buy and then have to change the lines on? I've got three bikes. One of them's European, and that's the only one that came with steel braided lines. This, possibly the cheapest 650 on the market, comes with steel braided lines. There's a lesson for other manufacturers there. The front suspension is non-adjustable, and the rear suspension, I think, is adjustable for preload as you can see here and I'm not sure I don't think rebound but I could be wrong front brake is a 320 mil Brembo one disc it's all you need and the back is a 240 mil Brembo stop you beautifully it also has a nice pair let's look at the dashboard a nice pair of Smith's like clocks at the front here with just enough information it has uh, if I turn it on does the usual sweep and then you can see it's got uh, ABS which is dual channel I think it's Bosch actually very very good stuff very unintrusive the usual neutral check engine oil light etc high beam indicators they're not self-canceling what's amazing about it though is it's got a fuel gauge it's got the usual odometer readings the only thing it doesn't have on it is a gear selector indicator I don't think you need it anyway there's a gear for you wherever you are and that's another thing the thing has a beautiful six-speed gearbox I had a as some of you might know I had a, a, a twin a Japanese W650 I cafe'd it only had five speeds uh, didn't have ABS and all of that sort of stuff. So this is this is a bike very like in the same vein as that uh, Kawasaki uh, or, a, or an early Bonneville. Some of the original Bonnevilles that came out, and I'm not saying the original originals, I'm saying uh, the early 2000s, the noughties, the early noughties. This is throwing back to that. The Bonnevilles have got bigger, more complicated, and I think they've lost the plot in some, some respects. If you want to go back to that original Bonneville, but with less vibes, more technology, fuel injection, then this could be the bike for you. It's very nicely finished. I love those kick-up pipes. The engine puts out, as I said, it's a 270 degree crank. It puts out 44 horsepower. You might think that's not enough, but what you're going to do on this bike, it is plenty. It will certainly travel comfortably at highway speed, at legal speeds in any country, but possibly the Autobahn. Just say that you have decided that there's not enough power for you. Royal Enfield sell an 850 upgrade kit for this, and it does not, it's thoroughly endorsed by the company, it does not void the warranty. It's totally warranted. So if you have that done to the bike, suddenly I believe you're up to over 70 horsepower, perhaps 75, maybe 80. I haven't quite got the stats. I'll flash them up on the screen. I don't know, about here somewhere. Okay, and I'll let you know. The other thing is you can put S and S pipes on these. I'll get a shot of those later on. Not that I think you need them. You know, if I were going to get the bike, maybe I'd change the indicators, make them a bit smaller. But with my nice front headlight, modern, bright, some people, they change the tail unit on it. These are all things you can do. I like the quilting on the seat. It just looks nice. Oh, and the other thing this comes with, not only steel braided lines, okay, not only ABS and all of that stuff, but it's, it comes with a center stand. 7,700 Canadian folks, it's got a center stand. Not too many manufacturers offering that these days. 
All right, enough said. Of course it comes in several different colors. The red one, there's the, the Baker Express one, which I really quite like. But this uh, Orange Crush, this is the sort of the retro color, I believe. I really quite like it. So what's the Royal Enfield 650 like to ride? Well, let's go find out. <laughs> First of all, you're greeted by a lovely soundscape. The twin with those pipes on it at a 270 degree, it's a beautiful burble. That's the first thing that puts a grin on your face. Lots of talk. And these are the roads you're gonna ride this bike on. You know those bikes you, you get going on and you just seem to like them straight away. This is one of those very easy to ride bike and I'm, I'm going up through the rev range here and there's no there's no increase in in vibes no decrease in vibes it's a very you just know you're on a bike but the vibes aren't intrusive nothing's coming through the seat nothing's coming through the bars but I can feel the pulse you know what I mean I can feel the pulse of the cylinders she's got a lovely note the ride on this thing is very smooth it uh, it's soaking up everything. It feels like I'm in a you know a very smooth Rolls Royce or something. It's a wonderful ride, and yeah, I can feel the road. They've done a great job with it. No problem uh, flicking this thing around. No vibes in the mirrors at this speed. I'm just over 3,000 RPM, 45 miles an hour. Pull it back, and you can feel the twin the twin heart beating as you propelled forward and then as you roll the throttle off as I'm doing now just just coasting with the engine not adding anything to it not taking anything away again smoother silk you can certainly live with this bike very versatile bike I've got no one behind me I'm going to try the brakes right now oh predictable very quick no problem with those. Very nice. Then as you rev her up, you can hear that sound. She's got some lovely pull. Just over four there, she really takes off. Lovely, lovely firm brake lever too. You pull that in and you get action straight away on it. The suspension doesn't dive like crazy either. These sort of retro throwback bikes have come a long way since uh, the early, the early noughties. Especially with the W650, which was a wonderful bike and really did, I think, hark back to the, the real 1960s bikes and not necessarily always in a good way. The frame had a hinge to it. It felt sloppy. This does not. This feels tight. It feels like a modern bike with character. I can feel the engine beating through it. Now, I've got no doubt that if you took this to a racetrack, then yes, you're going to find the limits of the suspension very quickly, but that is not what this is de designed for. And anyone who knocks this bike for not being as capable as, oh, I don't know, an MT-09 or a Z900 RS, you're missing the point of this bike. This bike isn't for that. This bike is for enjoying the visceral experience. The sound, the soundscape on this is marvelous. And the visuals, look at, uh, look at what I'm looking at here. It, it's, it's just a lovely combination. I've got these two lovely dials here. I've got this silver and this chrome across here. I've got this gas tank with a lovely flip up on it. By the way, folks, lockable, 7,700. And this, this gorgeous uh, orange crush tank. The mirrors are really nicely finished too. And again, vibration free. It's got very neutral handling. Now there are some people gonna say, well, you know, it's a 650 and, and it'd be a great beginner bike, but well, I'd quickly move on. That's where I think I'm gonna tell you, you're probably not. I think you're gonna find a lot of people who already own bikes or have been out of bikes for a while and wanna get back to a simple bike that gives them those visceral, pleasurable feelings of contentment the sort that when you're riding you forget what bike you're on it's the sheer pleasure of riding that this brings back to you that's the person i think this is going to appeal to it certainly appeals to me i already have three bikes in the garage and if i had the money i would spring for one of these without a doubt it 
it, it gives me that wonderful content feeling when I ride it. It's simple, it's easy. And the older I get, you know, the less, the less I'm concerned about another motorcyclist passing me or getting past me. I'm in my own world and this bike puts you there. It takes away all feelings of uh, competition, uh, aggression. I don't want to scrape a peg down on this thing. I, d I don't want to uh, go and find, see the biker in front, catch up to him and try to pass him. This is about me. I'm on this bike and I just want to enjoy the ride. I don't care who comes past me, who's around me, who's in front of me. I'm in my own world and just having, it, it's a pleasure. As you can tell, I'm loving this. It's got plenty of power for what you want it for, and yet it's got that thrilling satisfaction that you can wind it up. You can really wind it up and use the whole engine. I like that feeling. Something that's harder to do on liter bikes. My Z900 RS for sure, you're in uh, serious trouble if you start to do that. And it does uh, egg you on. This doesn't egg you on. It's just comfortable at whatever you want to do with it. Just play with the gearbox here. It's, it's such a nice positive gearbox. You can tell when you've shifted, but there's no, no grind, no, no sort of uh, grit to it. You don't have to sort of work against a notch. You can just pull the clutch in and pop her up, and she, she's just got that lovely snick. The fueling is perfect. There's no snatchiness to it at all. And this is a fuel-injected bike, not carved. Oh, when you roll off the throttle, hear that. That lovely deep purr. Yeah, that is nice. I'm going to go up this way. Oh, I love that sound. Yeah, she's very nice. And I, I just, I, no feet down, just super easy to, you know. Yes, a learner would love this bike, but uh, the only disappointment a learner will get from this bike is when they leave it and they move on to something that they think is better. I suspect, I'm warning you, if you're a learner, don't buy this bike unless you're prepared to stick with it forever. She pulls all the way to the red line without any anemic sort of coughing or bucking at all. And lovely, as you get closer to the red line, you get more character out of it. Oh yeah. Wow. Handling this, no problem at speed. That gearbox. What a lot of fun. And mostly legal fun. Oh, I'm loving it. So nice. We'll get to be sensible again and, and not too naughty now. Loving the little vibes you get through the seat as you really push her past six. Just lets you know, yeah. That is nice. Don't know what the tires are, but they feel quite confidence inspiring. I mean, it's, it's semi damp. It was uh, there was frost on the roads this morning. It was probably about six Celsius right now. It doesn't come with heated grips. That is something I would definitely put on this bike for this time of year. My fingertips are getting quite cool. But that's something you can do to the bike afterwards. Oh, one of my favorite viewpoints here. I think I'll do a little bit of a turnaround up here. very impressed with that. For the money I don't think it can be beaten. If you're looking for a retro bike I wouldn't even consider a Bonnie. I wouldn't consider any of the Triumph range now having ridden this. I wouldn't consider the W800 because it is and you know how much I love that thing but it is far more expensive. I'd be buying one of these. I expected agricultural, I expected unrefined, I expected cheap and nasty and what I'm seeing is Brembo brakes, plush suspension that handles corners at the speeds this bike can do. 
It's not a race bike. A lovely, lovely oral sound on it. This bike has a lot of character, uh, but it's a very capable bike, and I mean that in the best way. Let's talk about the riding position. You're very slightly canted forward. There's no weight on the hands at all. The, the, uh, the foot pegs, they feel perfect. My legs are bent probably at a 60 degree angle, I would say, but I'm a six footer with a 34, 34 inch inseam. If you're shorter than that, no problem foot down on this well I think it's about 31 and a half inch seat height so it's comparatively low and riding this is just so natural everything comes comes to hand really nicely the switch gear is lovely nothing wrong with it at all I mean it's you know it's got it's got a lovely tactile feeling when I'm turning the indicators and pressing them off they're not self cancelling okay headlight it's just where you want it I've got a flash right here the yellow flash button I don't know if you can see it you just trigger it in and you can flash your headlight the, the high beams are if you rock that forward. Okay, it's got the engine kill switch, the start stop over here, and that is pretty much it. It's all about back to, base, back to basics motorcycling. And like I said on this one, you're upright, but I'm not feeling any real wind blast. It's just the perfect cant. I'm, I'm canted forward enough that at speed, I'm not feeling I'm gonna be ripped off the bike. Uh, and yet at this speed, I'm not feeling any weight on my wrists. Now I, like I said, I'm six foot. 34 inch inseam and everything's falling to hand perfectly but I don't think it would be much different for anyone else who is a little shorter or taller than me and I should take this time to to thank uh, Paul and Peter at Bayside Motorcycles Bayside Custom Motorcycles in Parksville a new Royal Enfield dealer for the Central Island on Vancouver Island they're open I think uh, Tuesday to Saturday nine to five something like that Two of the nicest guys you'll meet. They're more than happy to, to lend this bike out if you want to go down there and take it for a test ride. But I warn you, have the money at hand because it's going to sell itself. The warranty that comes with this bike is three years. So if, in case you're wondering, well, for a bike that cheap, the manufacturer is just selling them and offloading them. No responsibility. No, they're for the three-year warranty. Now, you don't pay extra for that. That's what they come with. And not only that, the warranty is transferable. So if you decide for some crazy reason that you are going to sell the bike, within that three years, the new owner gets the warranty. They're back in this bike. Now, I'm not sure what you get miles per gallon on this, and I'll put, uh, I'll put the size of the tank up. Up, uh, ooh, where will it be? Up here somewhere, perhaps? But uh, I think it was about 70 miles to the gallon out of these things, which is phenomenal for a 650. And if the tank is anywhere, and a nice metal tank by the way folks, metal, if the tank is anywhere near what I think it is, which is all oh, 15 to 17 litres, something like that, well, I don't know, you're not going to be filling this up very often. Oh, she's just very, very nice. I want one. <laughs> Can't have one, but I want one. Okay folks, I hope you enjoyed my ride on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, a thoroughly enjoyable bike this is this is the next one that i would dearly love to get my hands on it's a lovely bike once again thanks for watching everyone if this is the first time you've watched please consider subscribing i do product reviews motorcycle reviews off-road and on-road vlogs as well as tours don't forget to follow me on social media that's instagram facebook and twitter and to like and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mobile Rider, out. Estate sale, okay. I should pop down there later on. Guarantee what they're selling on the estate, what? What, what, what? I know what. Santa, if you're out there, and I know you are, because we all believe in Santa, if you're out there, can you, can you bring me one of these for Christmas? Will it fit in your sleigh? Perhaps you could ride it to me. There's a nice red one, it's very Christmassy.